Okay, step one, installing the laser. How hard is it to put the laser on your CNC? You're gonna be shocked at how easy this is. Here is the laser right here. This is about a $10 laser. Actually, I think it's even less. And it's just this little round cylinder, you know, of course, with the lens on the bottom. And it has two wires coming out of it. And I've soldered additional two wires so I can bring it over here. And I come up over here and we're not wiring this into the controller or doing anything fancy. All we're doing is wiring this into a battery pack. And this battery pack right here costs, I think, $5 for two. And I got this battery pack because it has an on and off switch. So with that on and off switch, I can turn it on and off when I want to go ahead and use it. Uh, the mounting over here, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to show you in step two how we take the point that we have down here and do an offset for the router bit that is over here. And you can see that, you know, it'll be in a different position and we need that exact figure. So we'll go on to step two and see how we do that. Okay, what we got to figure out in part two is what is this exact distance from where this point is to where this is so that when we're setting this up, we'll get that precisely there. So we're not going to use a ruler to do that. What we're going to do I'm going to bring this down and put a small hole right there. So I have a small hole right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and zero out my X and my Y. Then we're going to come back over to our machine. And what I'm going to do is bring that cross here and put it exactly in that hole we just drilled. And it's amazing how precise this will be because where the two crosshairs converge, when you get into that spot, they actually like brighten up. Like right now, that is dead center in that hole. And all I got to do now is go back over. And I've got right there 2.5754 for the X and for the Y. Uh, minus 0 0.0610. These are the measurements that we need to put into our coding to get exactly positioned from here to our point. Okay, the first thing we're going to have to do is download the screen designer. And we're going to go to Mock Support, Downloads and Updates. And I will have links for all these at the end of the video. And here we are into Download Screen Sets. Click on the More Information. And basically down here they have Screen Designers. Uh, the one I found the easiest to use was the Screen 4. And it has a few little caveats, but it actually works, I think, simpler than the others. So we download that, and that's going to download a zip file. And what you're going to do is download that, save it, click on it, and you want to extract it. And I've already done it, but you want to extract it to your uh, C drive and the mock directory. Where's my C drive here? Let 
And you're going to come down here and go. And I'm assuming your Mach 3 is in your C drive. Double click there. And then select that folder. And it's going to go to C Mach 3. And then just click on, just click on Extract. And that'll put the files in there. To run uh, this particular program, and let me get out of here and I'll go over there because I've already downloaded that. To run that program, we're going to go over here to our C drive. We're going to go to the mock directory. And you'll see that I have a, a screen for uh, when we saved it. It's over here. We click on the screen for, and then you got a screen for exec. When you click on that, that's going to bring up the editor. You do not want to click on any of these in the top row as it'll freeze up this program. If you come down here, you can see you can start a new one. You can open an existing set. You can save a set and so on. So keep in mind, if you do it, you're just going to have to close it and open it back up again. But don't use this top row. So if I come down here, I can load and I come over to my Mach 3 directory. And for the one I just set up, I set up this one and I called it 1024 laser set. Now this is the one that everybody uses that hasn't been modified, the 1024 set. So all I did was copy that like, and it'll give you like a copy set. And then you just rename it to the one, you know, what you're gonna be using. And I'll pull this one up open okay so now it'll open this one up and once I have this open then I can make changes and I put a button down here that is my laser XY zero I looked for real estate up in here and I couldn't find any I was going to squeeze it in here but it kind of got you know mixed in with all these and I thought, well, I want it to where I can see it and make it easy. I could have reprogrammed this button, but I, I just made a plain text button, because then you can just add the text. And when you do click that, the make a button, you click outside the program, and then you can make the changes and add the text and so on. Like when I click that, like the text here, I could put sample text. And I can change the size here. If I wanted that to be 120 wide, put a 120 in there and say, OK. And now you've got that. That sample then could be moved wherever you wanted it, if you wanted it there. But that's how I got that over there. Quite simple. And then once you have the button, nothing's programmed into it yet. Then you can just come right over here and save it. And you click save and it's going to save it out and then you'll close it. Okay, I was all panicked out about doing a redesign of the screen because I didn't want to mess up anything that was already working. And I'm sure a lot of us feel that way. However, now that I've done it, I found that it is literally very simple to change and add a button to this screen. First thing we'll do, we're going to go up here. Uh, in the last uh, part of the video, you've seen where we added a button down here. Now, I'm in the standard screen set. How you get out of that, all you do is go to View, Load Screen, and remember we named the new one Laser Set. So we open that up, and now we're looking at the complete standard set, and all we got down here is that extra button we added. So the easiest way, if all I'm doing is moving my, uh, the you know, the head of the uh, spindle over to match where I put the laser crosshair, all I have to do is have a little bit of coding that'll get it over there. So 
if I go up here to operator up here on top and I go to edit button script click on that and you'll see here's the here's the different buttons that I could change well we don't we don't want to change these these if I was adding an auto tool if I didn't already have one I would be putting the code there uh, but here's the one I want to change so I'm going to click on it and it opens up the editor now what you're looking at right here is the code that I used to make this go where it needed to go uh, and how you figure out I'll show you in the video how we figured out where uh, and where we came up with this figure of 2.5622 and 0 0.0642 uh, these are figures that when I put the laser down there and marked it and went back over to the original hole uh, these are the distances that it traveled and basically I just added them on in here to make that change if I ever move my laser it would just be a matter of changing these figures to wherever I you know moved it if I added a different bracket or something and so on so what we're doing up here is we're setting a variable and the variable is that distance that we're moving We've got uh, the X, it had to move 2.5622, and the Y had to move 0 0.0642. Um, the plus and the minus, uh, originally I had them reversed, and when I went and tested it, I could see that it went away rather than going to where I wanted it to go. So I just came up and changed the plus and the minus signs that I had. and now it you know is dead on and down here is the code a g91 code and then we give it a g0 x and the x is the x move and y and, the, and yeah the x is the x and x move and the y is the y move this makes the incremental move distance that you set while is moving when this statement waits till it completes this like if it had to move it a long distance but that only takes a few seconds to move but it, it won't go on to the next code until you do that and then and then we give it another g90 code and we're going back to the absolute uh, moves and then uh, these two commands will zero it to the x and the y and so on so let me show you how all that works and I looked on the internet and I found some code that was very similar to this and I modified it to make mine work if you had the same configuration I've got you could probably take this and the only thing you're going to need to change are the two figures let me close that out so if we did want to do a test to see how that works you know we can go over here and let's just change g0 and we're just going to change x to 5 and y to let's say 4 and y4 and you look up here it changed the x to 5 and 4 so that's where it's at right now and that could be after we you know did the laser so now we want to move those distances we put and then we want to zero these out so we have our xy zero so if i just come down here and click on xy zero boom it zeroed them out and it had moved it as you've seen when we uh, looked at the original video and that's how we changed the screen set okay I am going to draw a line 
as precise as I can. So I've got this pencil width. And now I'm going to bring the laser over to that point. as dead on to that point as you can get. Now, here's where the laser is because it's coming down here. That's where I want to be. And here is where it is sitting. So I've made a macro and I go and I click on zero the XY. And this now has been zeroed. And if I come down It is absolutely dead on where that laser was. I am loving this.